Now we're going to look at how we can create a random block sample. As you can see on the left, we have a number of test scores again, just as our previous examples had. And in this case, we go all the way down to 100, just as we had before. But now what we're going to do is we're going to separate these into blocks. And what we've done here in this Excel in this Excel spreadsheet is we're using some of the Excel functions to automatically select the uh, blocks and then use Excel to actually select the actual items based on a random number. So let's go through this step by step. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to separate the scores into blocks, each of size n. In our case right now, we're going to use this sample size cell 10 as our block mechanism. What we're going to do is we've already had to uh, label the first entry uh, as in block uh, going to be, this is going to be number one, and they're going to be sequential. So it'll be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then it should start at the next grouping as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and proceed onward. We had to set the first one up as one as a default. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use an if function to help us determine uh, the number of the entry, what it is in each block. And there's a couple of different ways you could do this, but this is one. So what we're going to do here in this cell is we're going to use the function if C4, which is the one before it, we're going to add one to it so it would be two. If that is greater than this sample size selection, then we'll reset it to one. Otherwise, we'll just use the number that it was before and add one to it. So in this way, we can get uh, it to be two. As we copy this down to 10, that formula will hold and give us 10. But when we get to the next cell, what will happen is this, is that if we have our number 10, if that we add one, that'll give us 11 up here, which would be greater than the sample size. So it will then reset it back to one instead of adding 1 to the 10. So we'll copy this here and we'll see that we get it resetting to 1. So we will copy that function all the way down and you can see that it creates all the blocks of 10. And again there's a couple of different ways that you can do that but this is the one we've chosen for this example. Now what we're going to do is we need to say what selection, what is the kth item in each block that we're going to choose? So what we're going to do here is we're going to use the rand between function. And I'm going to put it next to the selection cell so that we can uh, determine what we want. And since our number is from 1 to 10, we will choose 1, 10 and get a random number, in this case 5. What we'll then do is we're going to copy this and we're going to remember do paste special so that it would give us our selection criteria. So we'll do paste values. And now 5 is going to be the one that we want. Again, the reason we do that is because since the rand between is volatile, every time we make a change to the sheet, this number will change as well. So now we just want Excel to tell us which one of these in each block we're going to select. So what we have is we're going to write another function that says if C4, which is the item here, is equal to G8, which is our random selection here, in this case 5, we'll put an X in it. Otherwise, we'll put a blank in it. And if we copy this down for the first 10 values, the fifth entry should be selected. And it is. So we'll copy this all the way down. And you'll see that in each block, it will select the fifth entry. So here is our randomization, where it selects which, what the kth entry is going to be. And then Excel will choose those kth entries. You can then choose a VLOOKUP on this select to actually select the actual row items or the row scores at that point.